can I divorce the narc? Many ask me this question. Can, Dr. Clark, can I biblically divorce the narc? Good question. My answer is yes, you can. I'll show you why in this video. Before I launch into this topic, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, do it. Join our team in helping spouses escape their narcs. God can use you in this way. We're all part of the same team. I'm tackling topics that not many in the church want to even mention, let alone talk about. And God is blessing us. Okay, I'm going to read a message I received from a man who does not believe you can divorce a spouse for abuse. I get many emails like this, frankly. I don't respond to them all. I did in this case. This is a good, this is a good guy, as far as I know, not mean. He's just wrong. So I'm going to read his email, and then I'm going to discuss it point by point. And one note of clarification, this, this is an abuse of narc that he's talking about uh, in, his, in his email. He says, Dear Dr. Clark, I stumbled across your video by chance. Okay, there's no chance. It was a God thing. But nonetheless, he, I stumbled across your video by chance, he says. I do agree with you. Jesus spoke about divorce for adultery and Paul's on a non-believer leaving their spouse who is a believer. Okay. In relation, if a person is abusing his or her spouse, he says, I agree with you. That spouse has a right to get out of the abusive situation. He says separation. Okay, he'll go that far, okay? The abusive spouse needs to seek counsel. If he or she doesn't, this guy says, the other spouse must stay separated and can't remarry. Okay, uh uh-uh, I don't agree with that, I'll tell you why. He, as far as he's going in separation, which frankly, that's where I used to be in my ministry. Ooh, been many years now, I've changed. He says, I don't think it is grounds for divorce. Abuse is not grounds for divorce, he thinks. He says, why? God hates divorce. That's one of his reasons. If these were grounds for it, then Jesus would have talked about it. In relation, the example of Abigail in 1 Samuel 25, uh, he says Nabal wasn't a nice husband. He was far worse than that. We'll get to that. He says, however, it isn't a good example for a married person to divorce. Nabal died, which left Abigail free. See, in his way of thinking, your, your narc husband has to die for you to be free. Well, God doesn't say that. He says, remember in Romans 7, 2, when a woman marries, the law binds her to her husband as long as he is alive. Okay, here's, I'm going to take it point by point and frankly refute what he says in a nice way because I'm so nice. He says, the abusive spouse needs to seek counsel. Okay, right away I know he doesn't understand narcissism. It sounds good to recommend that the narc seek counseling, but it's a waste of time and money. It's not changing. The narc will not change. He may pretend to change, but he won't actually change. The knock won't go to a counselor. And if he does go to a counselor, you've just wasted all the money in the world. It'll be for show. He'll, part of his fake repentance tour. He'll schmooze the counselor. He'll get the counselor on his side, especially if it's a pastor or a biblical counselor. They don't have a clue. He'll fool them. Sending a narc to a counselor is a violation of all the Proverbs about fools, which teach us to not try to reason with a fool. And the narc is a fool. Proverbs 1, 7, fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. The narc is not going to listen to any godly advice. He won't follow godly advice. He despises wisdom and he won't be accountable. The narc is the worst therapy candidate possible. This man in the email doesn't know that. Okay, point number two the man makes. If the Uh, abuser doesn't seek counseling the other spouse must stay separated and can't remarry i don't think abuse is grounds for divorce first it doesn't matter if the narc goes to counseling or not he's not going to change but second this man and frankly many in the church he's in the majority i'm in the minority will allow the abused wife to separate many won't even do that but but many will say okay well you can separate because of the abuse but never divorce and never remarry Well, that's ridiculous. That's not what the Bible teaches. His reasons, like many in the church, are exactly what he says. Well, God hates divorce. This is from Malachi 2.16. Let me read from my book, 20 Lies. God also, speaking of hating divorce, God also hates abusers who are intentionally destroying their spouses. We see that also in that same Malachi 2 chapter. And God hates wicked, violent persons, Psalm 111.5. God hates divorce because it breaks a sacred relationship. Marriage is a covenant established by him, but there are exceptions and living with an abuser is one of them. 1 Corinthians 7.15. This is from my book, 20 Lies. 
God wants you to separate from your abuser. And if your abuser does not repent and change, and, and he won't, God will be fine with you filing for divorce. His next reason in the email is this, is Jesus would have talked about abuse as a reason for divorce if it was a reason. That's not true. I hear that from a lot of church people. Jesus didn't choose to cover every topic in, in the spiritual life or marriage and divorce. He didn't. He could have. He didn't. For example, Jesus does not mention the abandonment by the unbelieving spouse as a reason for divorce. Paul does. Well, that's a reason for divorce that Jesus didn't mention. Jesus also does not mention chronic abuse. This man doesn't like my example of Abigail and Nabal in 1 Samuel 25, which I think is a great example. He says Nabal wasn't a nice husband. Wasn't a nice husband? Nabal was an abusive monster, a selfish fool who ridiculed David and his band of warriors. This guy was awful. You can just imagine what Abigail had to go through for years prior to her having enough. If Nabal just wasn't nice, Abigail wouldn't have risked her life to help David. This man says Nabal died, which left Abigail free. Here he tips his hand. The, he says he believes the abuser has to die for you to be free of him. That's not true. Not biblically. He misses the entire point of the story. Abigail risked her life to take decisive action against Nabal. And in that day and age, a woman, listen to me, never did that. She was done with Nabal, no matter if he died or not. God confirmed that he wanted Abigail out by killing Nabal. Yes, that's true. But if God hadn't killed Nabal, he would have gotten Abigail out some other way. That marriage was over. This man references Romans 7, 2, which says, when a woman marries, the law binds her to her husband as long as he is alive. It's an example of proof texting. I say yes, yes, as long as her husband doesn't commit adultery, doesn't abandon her as an unbeliever, and isn't an abusive narc. The three biblical reasons for divorce. Okay, if you don't have a reason, those reasons, yeah, you're bound to your husband. God doesn't care if your husband dies or not. He allows you to divorce for these three reasons. Absolutely, he does. Chronic emotional abuse, which may or may not include physical abuse, is a biblical reason for divorce. Let me read briefly from my escape, um, the NARC devotional, I Will Be Free, which by the way, if you're going through the escape process, I think it'd be a great book for you to get, I Will Be Free. The words of actual people that have lived through the nightmare you're living through, and they're very encouraging. And plenty of uh, Bible in this book too, and my comments. 1 Corinthians 7.15, this is from I Will Be Free. 1 Corinthians 7, 15, but if the unbeliever leaves, let him do so. A believing man or woman is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. Okay, here's, here's the point. In this passage, Paul teaches that chronic abuse, physical and or emotional, is a biblical reason for divorce. In such circumstances refers to other painful relationship conditions, not just abandonment. One of these circumstances is abuse. Paul is saying, God through Paul, that abandonment by a non-Christian spouse and other similarly destructive circumstances such as abuse are grounds for divorce. God wants you to divorce the narc because he wants you to stop being traumatized. God wants you to live in peace. You can't live in peace as long as you're married to the narc. And if you divorce for the biblical reason of chronic abuse or any of the other biblical reasons, you are free to remarry just as you are free to remarry if you divorce for the other biblical reasons. So yeah, if it's any one of those biblical reasons, you're free to remarry. Now to see my complete discussion of what the Bible says about divorce and remarriage in detail, get my ebook, Stop Feeling Guilty for Your Divorce. Dr. Clark has a book for everything. You know that. If you're wondering about what the Bible says about divorce and remarriage, I have laid it out in detail in my ebook, Stop Feeling Guilty for Your Divorce. And I say to this man who emailed me and to all those who believe you cannot divorce for chronic abuse, look, if you want to have a ministry keeping abused wives chained to the narcs, go ahead, feel free. You, you already have one. You do that. Me and my team also have a ministry based on scripture, helping abused wives and their husbands escape their narcs and divorce them. That's what we do.